On Hockey Day, we tell stories of players who have made it to the highest level, sometimes even winning Stanley Cups. But that isn't always the most important goal. As Marnie Gellner's about to show us, you don't have to be the best player on the ice to have the biggest love of the game. He had the best giggle. Had just like this belly giggle when he was a baby. You know, when you hear a baby giggle and you're just like, oh, that was Patrick. We'd always play in the sandbox. We had a sandbox outside and we'd always play in that. And then we'd always ride our bikes around the neighborhood with the neighborhood kids. We were always together. It was his personality. He always had a smile on his face. That's one thing that people always comment about, is that he always had a smile on his face. Patrick McMullen was a happy kid. Born and raised in St. Cloud, he loved sports and lived a normal, happy life. But in 2011, when Patrick was eight years old, he started having some headaches, dizziness, and blurred vision. An MRI revealed a golf ball-sized cancerous tumor in Patrick's brain. It was like getting kicked in the stomach when you hear that about your child. It was just the most hideous, awful thing you could ever imagine. Your beautiful child has this horrible disease, and here we go. Here's this journey that we don't want, <laughs> but we're taking it, and uh, it was hard. Patrick had surgery, and doctors were able to remove the tumor. After two months of radiation treatments, life for the McMullins returned to normal. Patrick had always loved to watch hockey, and when he was 10 years old, he decided he wanted to play. He just was so excited every day to go. I would pick him up and get him to practice and he'd be 10 feet in front of me with his hockey bag and I, I can still visualize him just practically running to the facility, just so excited to be there. I would be skating kind of with him and, you know, come on Patrick, you can finish, you can do that stop, you can do this and you could just see that smile on his face that it just light up the arena, it's just awesome to watch. He would get down off the ice and have a huge smile. He passed the puck or got in the puck and shot or something. He would be so happy. On October 27, 2012, 10-year-old Patrick played his very first hockey game. Here he goes out on the ice for the first time. Four days later, a call came from school saying Patrick was feeling sick again. The same symptoms and eventually the same diagnosis. Patrick's tumor had returned. He would spend the next four and a half years in and out of hospitals. Get it, Patrick! Good job, buddy! Patrick could no longer play hockey. He only skated in that one game, but he was a part of so many more. On November 19th, 2016, the St. Cloud Youth Hockey Association organized Play and Pray for Patrick to honor their friend with his favorite color as he went through treatments. The participating teams all went out and bought blue hockey tape and wrapped their sticks in blue. And the girls wore blue lipstick. <laughs> Even the officials Even got the into officials. it. They used blue tape. And... and it was just a beautiful tribute to Patrick. We were playing in a tournament in Grand Rapids and we saluted him like you would not believe. And we got the other team to salute him with us. Grand Rapids knows nothing about Patrick McMullen. But when they heard the story about behind it, all I had to do was go to the coach and tell the coach, this is what's going on. He goes, we're in. You know, you tell us what you want us to do. And it's just to see stuff like that and hear stuff like that is, is fantastic. A bunch of teams had taped their hockey sticks with blue tape and some wrote on their arms. It was amazing. No other words to describe it. Hey Patrick, on behalf of the men's hockey team here at St. Cloud, we want you to know we're thinking about you and praying for you. Love you, Patrick. Patrick also formed a special relationship with the St. Cloud State men's hockey team. He was regularly invited to games and practices, even inside the locker room. And the Huskies made sure Patrick became a goal scorer. <laughs> Hockey remained one of the biggest joys in Patrick's life. A visit from Ryan Souter would lift his spirits. But the six brain surgeries, 99 rounds of radiation, and countless chemotherapy treatments Patrick received over the years took their toll. You fight and you fight and you fight and you battle this horrible disease 
And with the child, you just, you never want to give up. But then you realize that it can't be beat. Patrick passed away on April 3rd, 2017. He was 14 years old. To honor Patrick's spirit and courage, his parents established the Patrick R. McMullen Smile in My Heart Foundation. The name was inspired by a connection between Patrick and his mom. He hated when I left the hospital. He hated when we were apart. And we had this thing, I'd say, Patrick, we're never apart. You're in my heart and I'm in yours. The artwork was inspired by Patrick himself a drawing discovered after he passed away that he had done in third grade. A perfect fit for the foundation, which will help families with everyday expenses so they can focus on the needs of their sick child. What we want to be able to do was to carry his legacy and uh, be able to help people. To help take the weight off of their shoulders a little bit. When you're dealing with a critically ill child, you really don't want to worry about utility bills or paying a rent. It's nice not to have to worry about that for a couple months. The foundation is something good and positive that came from Patrick's illness, something that would certainly have given him another reason to smile. He definitely impacted a lot of people, especially in the sports world and the community. His smile was definitely contagious. He never said, why me? He still kept his sense of humor, always making people laugh, making people smile. Patrick would have been a freshman at Cathedral High School this year. If you'd like to make a donation to the Patrick R. McMullen Smile in My Heart Foundation or learn more about the family's mission, please visit their website, smileinmyheart.org.